Welcome to day 474 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DSOFI. So Snapchat, Brian, Snapchat is getting into the NFT game. Yes, yeah, so yesterday we heard that GameStop was jumping into the NFT space. And today we learned that Snapchat is exploring ways to let artists show off their digital collectibles with AR filters, so augmented reality filters uh, on Snapchat. And to start, I just want to say this sounds a lot like what Story is doing with allowing the NFTs that people do produce to be viewed as filters. And it's almost as if Snapchat's taking their idea. But the company's set to start this experiment that they're planning to do uh, with a limited number of creators starting next month in August. Uh, in the test, artists uh, will be able to create and mint NFTs on another platform. So they could maybe do it on OpenSea or NFTZ maybe, and then import that NFT into Snapchat as a lens. And they're, they said that they're not looking to profit off of these NFTs in any way. They want to allow creators and artists to bring over their assets from other, from other services and other blockchains. Uh, they're also looking at ways in which they can help artists monetize their creations. So I, I think this just says a lot. We're in, this, we're in this period where we're in a crypto winter. NFTs are, are, are not as hot as they used to be, but you see all these big companies getting involved in NFTs. So I think it says a lot for the space. Yeah, definitely. And it seems like Snapchat took Design Stun or Ball's idea to me. I mean, I don't know if that actually happened, but they they definitely came up with the same idea, I guess you could say. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it just shows how forward looking the people within the DSO community really are. Yeah, so speaking of crypto winter, how much longer is that crypto winter going to last? Do you think inflation's going to come down? So, yeah. So today, this morning, like maybe an hour ago or so, uh, the the core price index, consumer price index, was released by the U.S. Uh, the U.S. government, and inflation rose by nine point one percent year over month over month. So this this last June compared to the June prior of June 2021, it was 9.1%. Uh, this means that the, the Federal Reserve, the US Federal Reserve is almost certainly going to raise rates by 0.75%, maybe even 1% uh, is a possibility, probably for the next two meetings. Um, this is definitely going to weigh on the stock market, U.S. markets. It's going to weigh on crypto, which we saw this morning. Bitcoin was trading at around 19900 And then the CPI number came out, and we saw it almost immediately drop to around 19100 uh, I'm not sure where it's actually at right now, but but it, it, it definitely took a hit. And it's definitely not going to do anything to help us pull out of this winter. One thing that I think is important to note, though, is that fuel prices here in the United States, as well as overseas, because of the price of oil being down, are down significantly over the course of the last three or four weeks. So the, so the July number should come in lower than the June number, which might signal to investors that we've finally hit peak inflation. And if that's the case, maybe we start seeing some green skies, blue skies, not green skies, blue skies and green fields ahead. Uh, which could be good for the crypto market and maybe we'll we'll see a bottom here soon yeah so bitcoin's trading at about nineteen thousand one hundred at the time we're making this video i honestly thought it would fall farther than that with those numbers uh biden's also expected to be meeting with saudi arabia in the coming i think coming days right so there could that could there could be some talks there about getting the price of oil down uh if opec can lower or increase their supply of oil that should help what, wait and see what comes of those meetings. Uh, I think I think if the numbers come down next month, which I think they will, I mean, it's, I don't see any reason why they won't with the price of gas going down so much. I think I think that's going to signal that we're, we reached a peak of inflation. I think we're going to see interest rates go up 75 basis points yet again, maybe one basis point, I mean, 100 basis points, but I doubt it. But I, I think that will be the peak, and I think 
the increase in rates will further will further slow down inflation. And I, I think maybe within a few months from now, we could be ready for another for another uh, crypto summer. What do you think? Yeah, it's going to depend because if this if the rate rise kind of tilts the U.S. economy into a recession, I'm guessing Europe's going to be in a recession as well. It it could push stocks down, and we've seen crypto really linked to the U.S. stock market, particularly the Nasdaq, which is the group of tech stocks. I don't know how long it's going to drag out. We could see the market drop uh, for another few months. We might not. It might be forward thinking enough where we won't and maybe we will bounce back. Yeah, and I, I think that's why we're not seeing a huge plunge in the price of crypto this morning because people are expecting next month to be much better. Like It's it's almost as if this month doesn't really matter. We are, people were already expecting a 75 basis point increase in the rate pretty much regardless of what the numbers came in this month, I think. And we're expecting the number to drop next month. So I, I think I think people are feeling more confident. I think I think there's confidence in the in looking at the economy and seeing it kind of coming back to normal in the future. It might not be there now, but I think we're on the right on the right track to hitting lower inflation in the coming months ahead. Yeah, I think any glimpse of hope and certainty uh, just adds clarity is what the market wants. Exactly. So speaking of clarity, Mossify clarified some points that we made in our video just yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. We talked about the Boys Club DAO, and we said that they were transitioning to a DAO DAO DAO. And Mossify corrected that. Uh, He said that Boys Club is transitioning to a DAO. So currently they're not a DAO. They're transitioning to a DAO, but they have not yet chosen which platform they're going to become a DAO on. Uh, of course, DAO DAO and DSO and Mossify and Natter all hope that they will choose DAO DAO to launch their DAO on, but there's been no chosen platform as of yet. Uh, there's a Twitter spaces, like we mentioned yesterday. I believe it's Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Dow Dow is going to participate there as well as the Boys Club. I, I think we're going to see if there's synergy there. We're going to see if, you know, Boys Club and Dow Dow are fit for each other. I think there will be some interesting discussion. Hopefully, Boys Club forms their Dow on Dow Dow. I think it will be a huge benefit for Dow Dow in that they already have 11,000 followers on Twitter. They have a huge community of people who are interested in partaking in a Dow. So it will be great. Yeah, and our apologies. I, I think we just saw hey, this is a, a upcoming DAO. They're going to have a DAO DAO Twitter spaces. We put the two together and just figure that they're going to be launching on DAO DAO, but we'll see. Hopefully they do. Uh, and if you're listening, Boys Club, uh, we're pushing for you to launch on DAO DAO. Yeah, we didn't do enough research, I guess. But speaking of Mossified, continuing with Mossified, he did say that associations are coming. Um, he made a post saying that. Uh, you know, Brian and I. Wait, talk wait this a lot. deserves a buzzer. Brian and I talk a lot about associations because we really feel strongly that associations kind of solves the whole verification issue. Uh, you know, verification is an issue not just on DSO, it's an issue on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's hard to get verified places. They kind of pick and choose who they want to verify. At, there's no real rhyme or reason for every individual verification. And, and that goes for all these platforms. And I, I think on DSO people are frustrated, especially DSO OGs who have been here since almost the very beginning, who feel like, you know, others are being verified. Why, why aren't I being verified? And associations is basically going to allow anyone to, to verify anyone else. And then the individual nodes like Diamond App, NFTZ, Supernovas, uh, DSocial World can all pick which verifications they want to use as the ones that they display on the show. So the social world, they have their own verification program. They can become an association verification node. And those verifications will be verifications by association. And the de-social world node will have their own, under their username, will have their own verifications that anyone else can use. Brian and I could say, okay, you know, if we're going to start a verification system, we're going to charge you $10. And for $10, we will review your ID We'll make sure that it matches up with your account in some way, or you have post some link confirming that that is who you are. Uh, we'll maybe 
give you a phone call and just talk to you and make sure you are really a real person. And then we'll give you a, a special Krasenstein badge that verifies that we verify you are a real person tied to this account. And then maybe Diamond would be like, you know, we really like Krasenstein's way of verifying people and we think it's a really re reliable way. We're going to I mean, who wouldn't, right? Exactly. We're going to start showing the Krasenstein badge next to all accounts and people are going to know that they're verified. But it doesn't just have to be the Krasenstein badge. It could be a badge that Brutal makes or a badge that NFTZ issues. And you could have multiple badges, verification badges next to your username. Some nodes will show one, some will show none, some will show 25. I don't know. But I, th I think it's going to be a really cool system. But with that said, Gabby and a lot of other women on the platform do feel like that women are being verified at a lower rate than men on the platform. And, you know, to me, if I, if I think about it, I feel the same way. Most of I did chime in and say that there is no actual data that backs that up, at least not from what he can see. But he also admitted that DSO doesn't take sex into account when you create an account. It doesn't take gender into account when you create an account. You don't check whether you're a male or female, so there's no actual way to to see if more males are verified than females. There's a lot of accounts you just can't tell what sex they are, what gender they are. So I think I think a lot of women on the platform have a right to kind of be a little upset that they're not being verified. I know there's so many women who have been here from the start who have not yet been verified, and that frustration I can definitely see being being an issue and i if i was in there if i was in their shoes i would probably feel the same way uh just to throw out a few names i know Chaike, clout women unite gabby miss katie ann kitty 4d sabira d marie and masha len are just a handful of some of the women who have been here and have been building on DSO through a commu through community aspects for the most part have not yet been verified and i mean it's pretty evident that they're real people uh but at the same time, I think to be fair, there have been a, a number of women who have been verified. Uh, some of that come to mind, Goldberry, Michelle Lord, Sandy Rose, um, Wendy Lee, Amanda Johnstone, and um, Matreshka. Uh, who else? Uh, Alina Ferry. They've all been verified. So, you know, there is this idea that women aren't being verified as much as men. And I, I'm sure there's some men who feel as if they should be verified and i i mean i could throw off sean slater jody bosart uh allman um who else ides of march i don't even know that might be a female uh sir Rhett, shady acres again could be a female i don't know but yeah I, and like ultimately i think we need like a better solution exactly uh we need a better way to to verify people uh because no matter how DSO chooses to manually verify people uh it's, it's not, if there's not a set of rules to follow, then, then people are always going to have issues with the process. People are always going to com be complaining or saying this should be done better. I, I think that like just a, a decentralized way to verify people is exactly what we need. And associations would be something like that. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm not against the idea of just removing all blue checks altogether, especially when associations get here and let associations be the only verification method for accounts. Because I do feel as though the DSO method, just like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, is kind of, they, they don't, they have rules. I, I mean, DSO doesn't really have too many rules, but these other platforms do of how you get verified, but they still pick and choose and there's no perfect way. So I'd like to see checks kind of wiped out and just let associations take over oh yeah totally once associations start i don't see a reason to have a blue check mark because it's more of a biased uh, a more of a biased indicator it's just whoever DSO had the time to verify so get rid of the checks start the associations agreed so let's move on to dow 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 has a proposal up for vote a new dow dow proposal on the dow uh, if you go to dow dow dot io forward slash d forward slash dow dow you will see it under proposals it asks the community what the dow dow trading fees should be currently they're set at zero and it's asking should the fees be increased and if so how high should they be increased so far the number one choice is that there should be no increase whatsoever it should remain at zero for now until dow dow can gain some traction bring on some popular DAOs, bring on a larger community 
Uh, I think it's about 76% of the vote so far is for no increase at all. Second most votes with uh, 19% says a 0.1% increase. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm in the camp of thinking, hey, let's keep it zero for now. Uh, we're building a platform. We're we're trying to attract people to Dow Dow. So we don't we're, like immediately. We don't need the profit. What we want are the eyeballs. We want the users. Once you get the users, then you can increase the uh, the fee and start raking in some money, some revenue. But right now, it, that's not the important part. So we voted for uh, to keep it at zero for now. Yeah, as of this morning, there are 31 votes cast and only 5.9%, 5.96% of the minted coins have voted. So if you haven't yet voted and you own Dow Dow coins, be sure you go vote. Every vote counts. And I, I think it's good to have every, as many people vote as possible. Yeah, for sure. Uh, use your voice. You bought into the Dow, so make your voice heard and vote. Uh, also, Dow Dow, they asked the community what features they want to see on Dow Dow. Uh, they also outlined their upcoming roadmap. Uh, so part of that roadmap includes social meta mask integration, uh, which would allow, allow you to create a Dow Dow DSO slash DSO account using meta mask keys. Uh, this would mean there would be a seamless onboarding flow, uh, especially for Ethereum users, which would be big or drive enable us to onboard Ethereum users a lot easier. Uh, also part of the roadmap is a USD slash USDC treasury support. And this would also allow DAOs to accumulate their investments uh, and treasury in US dollars, which would allow us to onboard more people from outside of DSO because it's easier. They don't have to buy another crypto. Uh, they want to also have USDC investment support, which would be big. Uh, and there were some really good ideas that that people provided as feedback. Uh, for example, G. Joe, he proposed allowing for documents to be uploaded to the DAO page and also for the ability for roles to be clearly defined with links to team member profiles uh, and to allow vote by proxy. So other users would be able to vote for you if you give them like the it. permission. Uh, all great ideas for sure. And then Ben Ersing, he suggested uh, an easy DAO MetaMask export for tax yeah, reporting. No, it was, it was a, he supported a DAO metadata export. Metadata, yeah, I'm sorry, not MetaMask. Metadata, <laughs> metadata export for tax reporting. Uh, and like having a treasury analytics dashboard and, and some other things, which I think would be important because it would make the the, the ease of use from a for a DAO creator to, to go up substantially. Uh, Tax issues are always a concern, at least for me, when I'm starting a new business. And with the gray area that a DAO falls in, just having an easy way to get some of this data and export it for taxing purposes would definitely be something I'd be looking for. Yeah, I love the fact that DAO DAO is reaching out to the community to get ideas because after all, the DAO is a DAO and it's run by the community. So kudos to them. Absolutely. So the social world yesterday, Mario Nofal made a post asking how he can help out in the crypto space. And DSocial World asked him specifically on Twitter uh, for help in translating DSocial World into Arabic. Uh, of course, DSocial World is a DSO node that is translated into multiple languages, but Arabic is not one of them, and they need help in creating a translation for Arabic. So Mario said that he's going to have his team help out. Uh, he said to email email his team with a link to that tweet and he's going to have his team help out in creating an Arabic translation or if if that fails he'll raise fun, help them raise funding in order to do so yeah and of course Mario's company NFT Tech is a sponsor of this video uh, Mario is doing great things within the within the crypto space he also hosts his round table on Twitter spaces which they get 20 to 50,000 people every they're time they're the most popular Twitter spaces on all of Twitter spaces it's crazy they do like $10,000 giveaways in fact I think tomorrow there's actually a Twitter space go to go to the Mario Nawfall Twitter account you'll see he'll, he posts updates I think tomorrow uh, maybe morning or afternoon there's another Twitter space uh, from Mario a uh, round table event, talking crypto, talking all kinds of great business insight. Yeah, he has great guests on there too. Uh, you'll, you'll be amazed by some of the people that he has on his show. So one, WUN, another DSO node, wants to replace Linktree. 
And basically, one is like a highly upgraded version of Linktree where you can buy creator coins, you can do all kinds of stuff. And Bobby Digital 42, the co-founder of one, said that he's currently reaching out to all DSO users who have a Linktree link in their profile and asking them to switch over to one. And I mean, I can't see why you wouldn't because one is a lot better than Linktree. All you do is check it out and you'll see that within three seconds. Yeah, I, I, we really should move ours over with NFTZ as well. Just a t matter of finding time. We've been so busy, but but one is great. We got to meet Bobby Digital in, in LA. Uh, he's doing amazing things within the crypto space, within the just tech tech world. And and one is definitely uh, a project that you got to keep pay keep paying attention to. Speaking of projects to pay attention to, Sacred Skulls is currently printing their first run of merch today. And that merch is going to be only provided to the first 33 NFT Genesis holders. So it's a reward to those who backed Sacred Skulls in the very beginning when they were first getting off the ground. Uh, Sacred Skulls, the NFT project, an amazing project built on the DSO blockchain. I, I love what they're doing with their merch. I love the fact that they're giving you the 33 members uh they listed all 33 members should i mention them or not brian uh sure six let's, let's eyes marco polo clay oglesby scrutinized fast freddy madam fetish henchman mark bentley rico pickle joe nordian ouija blockchain padawan night 10 fpf fund or F fp fund dylan jagger lee doodles pack tracks asg brian drever faces of ali farahat matt hope calvin crime Bitboss, Tiger Boy, Real Zach, Mercury, Spunk Art, Z and Me, GDS, and Katra, Katram Dean. So congratulations, you're going to be getting some merch from from Sacred Skulls. And yeah, and that was like a list of the OGs of OGs. Yeah. Lots of lots of old names. I I wish we'd see more of. Maybe maybe this post will get their attention if, well, if we tag not them. this post. Maybe this merchandise will get their attention. I think that has a better chance than just merely being mentioned in a lame Krasenstein video. That's a good point. So moving on, the 10 people with the most NFT bids in the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ, are Studio, Studio Richards, Vizness Suleran, Meta Philosopher is back up there in the list after missing a day, after a little bit of funny drama, I guess you could call it that, uh, followed by Rhubarb, Spunk Art, Manic, Scrutinize, MP3, NFT Pets, and ZN Mead. And the most viewed NFT from the last 24 hours is once again a Priyana Shek mice head, uh, NFT number 006. So the mice heads are getting a lot of views on Tearing NFTZ. It up. Um, moving on, the top diamonded creators of the last 24 hours, according to Altum Base, are Sean Slater, Michelle Lord, Dee Marie, Mysterious Ladies, Quanti, Miami Japan, Krasenstein. Clout Women Unite, Now and Then, and Happy Rabbit. And Alton Base contacted me. They've changed the way they're listing their top diamond creators. Uh, if you go to their account, they explain it a little bit better. Uh, but but definitely check that out because they're, they're changing the algorithm a little bit. Cool, cool. And so I want to mention a few people who have come back to DSO after being gone for uh, over 30 days. And mostly women who have, who like some of these women played a huge role in building up DSO. And some of them have lost interest and left. And I, I noticed a few that came back in the last 24 hours. And number one is John Navi. And I don't know if I, I'm saying your right name correctly, but she was one of the original OGs. She was part of like the DSO. Uh, remember that DSO? What was it? Like a big DSO event that was online. Do you remember that, Brian? Vaguely, yes. So she was one of the speakers there. Uh, we miss her. I, she was... she. She provided so much inf so much great insight into blockchain tech and had some great ideas for DSO. So hopefully John Navi is back. Hopefully Yeah, you're talking around. about the Tropics, the Tropic yeah. the event Tropics and, and Maddie Pryor put together. Yeah. Uh, and it was Adder, a great event. And Diamond Hands uh was supposed did it Diamond Hands appear? I don't know. Diamond but, Hands or, uh chatted, text chatted. Chatted, yeah, that's right. But yeah, she was great. And Bricks Boston one hundred, another OG who contributed so much to the community. She, she left and she had been gone for 243 days, but she did come back and she made a post. And she made a post not from Diamond App, not from BitClout, uh, not from 
NFTZ, but she made a post from another node. And I'll tell you what that node is. She made a post from, oh, I lost it. What was the node? Anyhow, she's back. And I'm glad to have her back. I, I think I think the community in general is glad to have her back. I remember uh, her back in the clubhouse days. She was big yes. on clubhouse, uh, very informative, uh, would, would be in clubhouse quite a bit. Uh, I remember those days well. Yeah, and Kimberly Garner, another woman who had left and is back at least for a day, hopefully longer, hopefully these people stick around. But anyhow, I think that's all the news we have for today. Uh, everybody have a great rest of your day, and we will talk to you tomorrow.